Hey, Nate here. Something really cool that we're offering. It's a whole community called Vets Advantage that has a whole bunch of past blog posts with information on the VA disability benefits process from beginning to end. Everything you need to file your claim properly and maximize your benefits is in the Vets Advantage. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to go ahead and join the Vets Advantage and become a part of a very thriving community teaching you about the VA disability benefits process. And as always, thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Shelly Mark, and I'm an attorney with Hill and Ponton, and I am with you today to talk about appealing claims with the VA and some tips to make your appeals um, more successful um, and just to understand the process a little bit. So what are some tips for increasing the success of appealed claims? I think the first thing that you want to do um, when determining whether to file an appeal is to understand what it is you need. What are we trying to establish or what is missing? Um, probably the best way to determine this is going to be to actually review the decision and find the basis for the denial. Um, the question will become, what, is, what are they asking for? What are they saying hasn't been established in the case? Um, this could be possibly they're, they're saying that there is no diagnosis or um, that the records are missing from what you're trying to prove. But that's definitely the first step is going to be to determine um, what do you need to prove your case. Um, once you determine what it is that's missing, and then you're going to determine what type of an appeal you need to file based on what it is that you need to do or what you need the VA to do during an appeal. So I know we've gone over here at Hill and Ponton lots of videos on the different lanes that you can take at the regional office for when you're filing an appeal. And this is where when you're determining um, what needs to be proven, that's going to determine what lane you're going to go into. Let's take, for instance, that the denial says, um, we're denying this because you don't have a diagnosis. And you know that you do have a diagnosis and that you have those medical records that show your diagnosis. Then you're going to file a supplemental appeal and you're going to include those, those notes or those doctor's records or whatever evidence that you have to show the VA that I do have this diagnosis. And that supplemental appeal is going to allow the regional office to consider new evidence. And then they're going to issue a decision from that new evidence that you are going to submit with your appeal. Uh, remember with a supplemental appeal that you do have to submit new evidence. That is the point of the appeal is to submit that new evidence. Um, does not have to be related to a diagnosis. It could be evidence um, of a of a deployment. It could be evidence of a stressor evidenced by a buddy statement that you have. Um, it could be any evidence supporting what the VA is saying that you have not established in your claim. Um, and that's going to be submitted with the supplemental appeal. If you're looking at your denial and it's telling you that you don't have a diagnosis or that you haven't established that you were deployed to a certain area or something of that nature and you know it's in your file um, and you know that you've submitted it or you know it's part of your, your personnel records or, or you know it's part of your VAMC records and they're just not considering it, then that's when you're going to probably want to file a higher level review. Um, that is an appeal at the regional office that is just a closed record review. So you're saying, I don't need to submit new evidence because you have it. I just need you to properly consider it. In those types of appeals, I would probably recommend that you request an informal conference so that you have an opportunity to speak with someone from the regional office. And you can point that out to them. Like, no, I have this. You guys have this evidence. This evidence is in the file. And I'm asking you to take another look at it and issue a new decision. Um, there, there is another lane also that you can use to appeal that goes up to the Board of Veterans Appeals. And so depending on the situation, that may be an option for you as well. If you have already submitted everything to the regional office, they've considered everything and they continue to deny it, then, then you, it might be time to go up to the board with that evidence. So we are asked frequently how long the appeals process takes. 
um, at the regional office and at the board. And it's difficult to say um, exactly how long the process is going to take because the different types of appeals do take different amounts of time. Um, and honestly, it just kind of depends on the regional office and who's working the case on how long it'll take. I would say a good estimate for a higher level review appeal at the regional office is probably about six months, maybe eight months, sometimes less than that. Um, if it if the appeal has been pending for longer than that, then I would begin reaching out and just asking and making sure there's not an issue or that they're not waiting on something from you. For a supplemental appeal, it's a little bit different because you're submitting new evidence. So that can trigger the VA to need to do some development. Um, so they may, you may be submitting evidence that uh, then leads them to request a CNP exam. So that's going to take a little bit of time for them to get that set up. And then you go to the exam, get the report back from the examiner and then issue a decision. Um, or you may reach out to them and, and notify them of records that they need to request. And so that's going to take some time. Um, I would say an estimate of time for a supplemental appeal, maybe more like a year or so if development is needed. And if you're filing up to the board right now, there is a significant wait time um, for an appeal, unfortunately, at the Board of Appeals. Um, and that, I would say, um, unless you have a reason for an expedite or an advance on the docket is probably at least three years or so to get a decision from a board judge. Um, you can request an expedite at the board if the veteran is over the age of 75, is homeless, um, or there is other, some, or terminal illness, of course, or some other um, circumstance that you can show dire need. So what are some reasons that you would want to appeal um, a denial from the VA? Well, this is obviously you want your claim to be approved, so you're going to appeal it. But more so than that, the most important thing about filing an appeal is protecting your effective date. Um, it's always very important to remember that filing a new claim after a denial is not, it's not normally going to protect your effective date. You need to file an appeal properly, timely, and on the correct form that the VA requires for the appeal to properly protect your effective date. As long as the appeal, um, most appeals um, are filed with the regional office within 12 months of the denial and on the proper form, you are protecting your effective date. So as long as you're continuously pursuing your claim and filing your appeals timely, then when the VA does grant the service connection, then you're going to be able to argue your effective date all the way back to the date that you filed in most cases. And I think that that is most definitely the most important reason to make sure you are filing your appeals timely. So a couple of the reasons on why you would want to file an appeal. Um, you, you may want to file an appeal so you can get new evidence into the file, whether you have uh, come upon new evidence while the claim has been pending, or there's something that you would like for the VA to consider that's new, filing the appeal is going to give you the opportunity to present that evidence to them. Also, if you need the VA to request something for you, you can file an appeal and argue that the VA has a duty to assist you. You can ask them to assist you in getting records from when you're in the military, from getting deck logs from the ship that you were on when you were active duty, from acquiring any information that you're not able to obtain. Um, and that's their duty and that's part of the process. And filing the appeal and asking them to do that is something that you are definitely entitled to do. That's Trying to think of reasons that you would not want to file an appeal. Um, first, of course, if you're if you're not interested in pursuing the claim, some people come to us and they have filed multiple multiple claims, um, and it, it sometimes becomes us looking at things and saying, okay, what claims here can we prove? What do we have evidence to prove? And then those those issues that we really don't think we're going to be able to prove or there's not any evidence to, to support it, then we're just not going to appeal those. And we're going to appeal the conditions that we feel like we can get a favorable outcome on. And that's important. You don't have to appeal it if it's denied, um, of course. 
You can always file to reopen the claim later if you choose not to appeal it. Just know that if you are going to reopen it in the future, you will have to present some new evidence to the VA. So again, the most important thing about appealing denials from the VA is to properly choose the correct lane for your appeal depending on what development is needed or not needed or what you're trying to prove so that the appeal is processed correctly and then also to protect your effective date make sure your appeal is filed timely that way your effective date is is protected and when that claim is granted down the road that you get the proper effective date I hope these tips have been helpful and please um, reach out to us for any assistance and thank you.